you unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Roger, dispatch. This is Franklin. There you are, Bobby boy. Hey, Smitty. What's your present location? I'm out on Arrowhead Road. Hey again, Franklin. Where are you? Old Arrowhead Road, just past the fork. What are you doing there? Following up on those lights. What lights? Last night, the captain told me about it. Thought you were off duty. I am. It's time for one last stop, then I'll bring the car in. Roger that. See you back here at... Uh... Say 1700. Ten four. Yes? Miss Scott? That's right. I'm Trooper Franklin, Miss Scott. May I come in? Okay. Nice place you have. How gracious of you to say so. I see you got a fire going. Smoke from the chimney. I don't have much choice. You know how cold it gets up here? Matter of fact, I do. I don't know what ever possessed me to take a cabin in the mountains. Excuse me while I put another log on the fire. Uh... Yes? Were you in town this morning? Guilty as charged. It's an unhappy pilgrimage I'm forced to make once a week. Unfortunately, no one will deliver my supplies, so I have to go down and get them. Set for a few more days. Was there something else, Trooper Franklin? Mr. Barth, the general store said something about... Did I forget to pay him? No, nothing like that. Well, what did he say? Apparently, you told him you saw some lights in the sky. Oh, that. I may have mentioned it. So? Well... I thought I'd stop by and ask you a few questions. That's very intrepid of you, Trooper. Just following up. Actually, I did see something in the sky last night, and I did mention it to that pickle barrel wheeler dealer. But I mentioned it to him because the general run of dialogue down in the village is dull enough to make me want to retire from the human race. Is it? I've had it up to here with stories about rainfall, wind velocity, snow level... And, of course, some very gripping bingo games. So I thought I'd inject something new into the dialogue, which happened to be a very small aside about seeing lights that flashed on and off for about 15 minutes last night. That's all. I can assure you, officer, there is no cause for a general alarm, let alone martial law. At least not so far. What kind of lights were they? Mr. Franklin, if you're looking for a red-hot gun down battle against the forces of evil, you'd better settle up and head north. Find yourself an abominable snowman or something. There's nothing here for you. You're from New York, aren't you, Miss Scott? The way you say it, it sounds like a misdemeanor. Not at all. I was just interested. We heard tell about your taking a cabin here, living alone. You were some sort of fashion designer, weren't you? I was some sort of fashion designer. My yearly salary would have bought the main street of that rinky-dink whistle stop down there. I had what is euphemistically known as a nervous breakdown, so I came here to this cabin to be alone. But you can't be alone here. You have to share your private life with some country bumpkins and a bunch of state troopers right out of Gilbert and Sullivan. So, Trooper Franklin, to sum it all up, you won't find anything here. So why don't you just run along? I think you're quite right, Miss Scott. I don't think there's much out here for me, or for that matter, for anyone else. And what's that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that in your book, anyone who doesn't buy their clothes on Fifth Avenue is a bumpkin. And I guess everybody who doesn't broaden their A's is provincial. And culture is something that can only be inherited by insufferable snobs, of which you, Miss Scott, are a charter member. What was that? Stay away from the window. The light outside is so bright, I... I can't see anything. I said stay back. What? What was it? 
Get in the house and bolt the door. Just do it. My pleasure. The major ingredient of any recipe for fear is the unknown. And here are two characters about to partake of that particular meal. Miss Charlotte Scott, a fashion editor recovering from a nervous breakdown, and Mr. Robert Franklin, a state trooper, a gentleman of average imagination who up to now has dealt only in unimaginative realities. And the third member of the dinner party? The unknown that has just landed a few hundred yards away. This person, or thing, is soon to be introduced. For this may be a mountain cabin near Lake Arrowhead, California, but it is also a clearing in that shadowy realm known as the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Fear, starring Jane Seymour and James Keach, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Sorry, but until we know what's out there... Uh... I understand. I guess. You're not frightened, are you, Miss Scott? It so happens, Mr. Franklin, it so happens that you put me in the wrong sorority. I'm a charter member, all right, but not of the Society of Snobs. I'm the founder and chairman of the Board of Society of Frightened People. People who are so frightened they can't face the world and have to run off to little mountain retreats like this one. They act superior because that's supposed to hide their tensions and neuroses. Thank you for your honest answer. Do you have any coffee? I... I think so. Then I'll go out and look around while, while you make some. Deal? Deal. If I don't see anything, I'll stay here for a while until it comes back. Then I'll take you into town if you like. I doubt that'll be necessary, but... What was that? The noise and, and the light. Could have been a meteor, I suppose, or an aircraft off its route. But you don't really think so. Well, those would be rational explanations. Give me an irrational one, then. Go ahead. I can take it. Take your pick. Maybe, uh, maybe something from outer space. Right. Take a look out that window. Do you understand everything out there? I sure don't, especially up here. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. If I remember my English class, that's Shakespeare. Isn't it, Miss Scott? Yes, it is, but the question is, what's that? Where? You can see it from the window, over there, just beyond the trees. It it looks like a, a light of some kind, a, a white light. Yes, I see it, about 400 yards. Now you tell me, am I imagining things, or, or is that light blinking on and off? Mr. Franklin, I saw another flash. That was my camera. Well, did you find anything? Not much. What do you see? The top of that big tree? It's been sheared off. Shine your flashlight up. The top of the branches are all cut through or burned. They're still smoking. They're what? Stay there on the porch. I, I, I want to take a couple more pictures. What in the... Hey, that's my car! What happened? It just started moving and hit the trees. Did you ever hear of an emergency brake? Heard and used. The emergency brake was on, I swear. There are only two of us here, and neither of us was near that car. So? Who pushed it? Maybe nobody. Maybe the brake just gave out. You believe that? For the moment, that's the only explanation I can come up with. What are you going to do? I'm going to try and push it down on all four wheels again. Oh, it's wedged in there between these two trees. Oh, I can't move it. But if I can get the door open, I can call for backup. Be careful. There. Radio should be okay. Come on. 
Does it work? Dead. No power at all. You have a phone inside? Thank God, that's one sacrifice to privacy I didn't make. I've got a telephone and a pot of coffee. And at this moment, both are luxury items in my book. Sounds good to me. You didn't find anything, did you? I mean, the cause for that sound and, and the light. There was a light. I sure was. I saw it, too. I didn't find the cause, but I found some of the effects. The tops of the trees were all sheared off, cut right through, and they were... What? Still smoking, burned. Just as if some oversized acetylene torch had plowed right across them in a straight line. Well, what could have done that? Lightning? Except the sky is clear. Not a cloud. And no thunder. Go ahead. Phone's on the wall in the kitchen. After you. Better lock it. You just applied for membership, huh? In what? My club for frightened people. <laughs> Lady, I fought in the war. And I've been a cop for a while now. I'm not ashamed to say that I've racked up more scared hours than a rabbit. Thank you. For what? For an honest answer. It's just that I know a few things about fear. So do I. But this is a new one on me. It's all the same. I wouldn't say that. I don't know exactly how to explain this, but I finally figured it out. And it helped me get through a lot. If you can learn it, maybe it'll help you too. I'm all ears. Look. Fear is fear. No matter when it happens, an instinct, a natural human function, like breathing. It's a warning. One of the signals we get from our nervous system in order to survive. But how we react to the fear when it comes, that's what counts. What are you saying? That there's a choice? Maybe there is for you. There's always a choice. No matter what. You can get the shakes and crawl under a bed if you want. Or you can clench your fists and get on with your business because staying scared, being so sick with worry you can't move, isn't going to change anything. It's how you handle the feeling, what you do with it. That's what makes the difference. That decides whether you survive or not. You see what I mean? You've thought a lot about this, I take it. I've had to. It's part of my job. Well, you handle it whatever way you want. Me? I think I feel more comfortable hiding under a bed. <laughs> so you have a sense of humor after all? You thought I didn't? I wasn't sure. Maybe that's my defense. You got two beds? What? I might want to crawl under one myself. Your phone's dead. No, it's not. You don't trust anybody, do you? Once upon a time, look where it got me. Coffee ready? Here. Thanks. This is getting to be like a bad movie. Is it? I don't see many movies. Now, I suppose, I suppose that in the next scene, somebody knocks on the door. Somebody or something. I like comedies myself. I'm not much for science fiction and horror. Neither am I. You don't make bad coffee <laughs> for a fashion designer. You're pretty astute. For a state trooper. What are you looking at that door for? Waiting for the knock, I guess. If we could predict it, we wouldn't have anything to worry about. Well, what do we do till then? Wait a while. I'll hang around, just in case. In case what? Just in case whatever's out there decide they've scared us enough and crawls in out of the dark. Crawls? Or hops, or skips, or jumps. I like that better than crawl. I'm not too big on the word dark, either. What are we really talking about? Something that makes loud noises, flashes light and burns the tops off the trees. Whatever it is, I'd like to nail it, though. Pay back the taxpayers for my wrecked car. <laughs> that, I'm afraid, falls under the heading of duty. I call it an admirable attitude, especially under the circumstances. I'll tell you something, Miss Scott. Despite all that you may have heard about officers of the law, we react like normal human beings. Roaring fire, mountain cabin, hot coffee, not a bad life. If I live long enough to retire. What is it? Didn't you... Didn't you hear that? Where? Up there. It sounded like it was on the roof. Do you have an attic in this house? I don't think so. Is there a way I can get up on the roof? Not from inside. What are you doing? If we've got an intruder, it's time to put a stop to this. 
Please, please don't. I'm taking the flashlight. Leave the lights on and lock the door after me. And don't open it unless you hear my voice. No matter what. Do me a favor. Be careful. I'll do my best, miss. Just come back. No sense at all. It's me. Can you prove that? Trooper Franklin, Arrowhead PD, the gracious, astute guy with the camera. Did you see anything? Not on the roof. I couldn't have just imagined it. There was a sound up there. It was like, like, like footsteps or something. Nothing. No sign of footprints. Nothing at all. Not on the roof anyway. Well, what did you see? What did you find? I climbed down and checked out the area. And? Maybe... Maybe there's just a little too much imagination going around tonight. Maybe it's the darkness. Or the isolation up here, but... But if anything was on the roof, I'm afraid it would have crushed this house flat. Why? Because this thing, or whatever it is, moved the car back to where it was. What? Sometime in the last few minutes lifted it up and set it down the same spot exactly but that's impossible it was stuck between two trees i think i know how it happened what will you just say it somebody carried it in his hand <sighs> that's not very funny take a look these are the pictures i took out there there's the hood of the car and the sides what does it look like to you what does what look like there's the driver's door and the top, three different angles. You can see it in the flash. It stands out. Oh, I do see something, some kind of design. What? Take a good look. Swirls? Circles? I've seen a lot of them, just never this big. What is it? A fingerprint. Oh, you're joking. One big fingerprint, about two feet wide. The car was lifted up and carried in somebody's hand. If you're trying to scare me, you've made your point. You can stop now. And if it is a fingerprint, then we shouldn't have any trouble finding our invader because he must stand better than a hundred feet tall. Oh, what time is it? Six o'clock. Did you get some sleep? An hour or two, on and off. How about you? About the same, I guess. Sorry about the sofa. Oh, that's all right. It was fine. Was the blanket enough? I kept the fire going. Oh, that was the last log. Don't worry about it. I didn't hear anything else. Me neither. How about some breakfast? Whatever you got. We better be ready to greet the morning and anything else that happens to be out there. What about the police department? The state troopers, or whatever they're called, what, they come looking for you? If they can figure out where I am. Did you tell them where you were going? I said I was going up Old Arrowhead Road, but that covers a lot of territory. I didn't say exactly where. Take my truck. Of course, I don't know what you're going to tell them once you get there. I got the pictures from last night. I guess it'll be safer in the daylight. At least we'll be able to see what's out there. I'd say we won't be able to miss it. There's the car. Just where you parked it the first time. With the dent still in it. I guess they don't do body work. Oh, my God. It really is a fingerprint. That or a practical joke. You got any friends out here who'd go this far? A little bent, maybe. If I did, they'd have been committed by now. Where's your truck? Behind the house. I'll get it. Keep your eyes open. Oh, I will. I'd better check out the radio one more time. Just don't go anywhere, all right? Bring it around. 
still dead. <laughs> Miss Scott? Oh, dear Lord. What? What happened? Come and see. Is the truck gone? No, it's there, but just just come. It's you, you, You've got to see this. There. Now you tell me something, will you, trooper? What's that? The sinkhole? Will you look? More like a crater, actually. All the way from the back of the house to the trees? It wasn't there before? No! To tell you the truth, it... It looks like a... Go ahead, say it. A footprint? Right, a footprint. That's 20 feet long. That's what it is, all right. A footprint. But this part is only the toe. What? The whole thing is more like 50 feet across. Let's get out of here. Uh, I, I gotta make a record of the evidence. Are you crazy? Run. Run where? The village down the road. Who cares? Some place, any place, as long as it's away from here. Use your head. It's 30 miles to the village, and no matter what direction we go, something that tall could just block the way or reach down and crush us. Besides, whatever it is, it's, it's as big as the mountain. Then what can we do? Try and fix the car radio so we can phone for help. And then pray that whoever's walking around out there has a name like... Like Gulliver. Just an overgrown, nice guy who doesn't mean any harm. You you do anything you want, but I'm not staying here. I'm getting right out now, and I'm not coming back, and I don't care if I ever see this place again. Miss Scott? Miss Scott! Stop, please! <coughs> Where are you? Don't, don't hear! Don't, don't try to get up. Don't, don't try. Did you break anything? Shh. What? Stay down. It'll see you. What will? That thing. There's no thing. It was there. I looked through the top of the trees. It, it, it was in the tree? It was behind the tree, standing above the branches. Where? Where? I, I, I don't see. It's gone now, but it was there. Its legs it started walking this way. Its legs were standing right in front of me. Come on, we're going back. No way. There's nowhere else to go. I can't. Do you break anything? I don't think so. Then hold on to me. I'll help you. We have to hide. There's no place left to hide. Down there in the gully, under a tree, under the leaves, all right? Anywhere, just don't let it see us. We're not going to hide. We have to. We can't. You didn't see it. I thought you were from New York. What's that got to do with anything? New Yorkers are supposed to be tough, aren't they? Oh, so this is a macho thing. I, I'm, I'm talking about survival. So am I. Well, if you're a precious male eagle... Listen to me. You don't survive by running scared. Nobody does. Do that and they're controlling you like a rat in a maze. The only chance is to take control of yourself. And how do you do that? Make a plan and carry it out no matter what. Do you hear what I'm saying? No matter what. Otherwise, you're done for. You may as well dig a grave right here and climb in because that's where you're going to end up. Now, get a grip, New York. Show me something. Show that thing. Or give up right now. You can't have it both ways. So, make a choice. One or the other. Do you want to live or do you want to die? All right. I'll try you were wrong about one thing, Trooper. What's that? I saw it. And it... It had a big, round head with one eye right in the middle. But... But what? It's not a hundred feet tall. From where I was, I'd say... I'd say... at least... three hundred feet tall. get this door open if I'm going to fix the police radio. I need to get out of the dashboard. I'll need the tools. I don't have much. Like what? Basics, hammers, some wrenches, screwdrivers, a pair of pliers, knives, well, and an axe for chopping wood. That'll do for starters. Bring me the axe. What for? I have to climb all the way in. The only way I can do that is to break the windshield. I'll bring you what I've got. Miss Scott? 
Charlotte. I brought what you asked for. Come here. The tools look pretty rusty, but the axe is okay. Now. What happened to all the birds? What? The birds. I wake up to songbirds every morning. I hear them all day long out of here. I, I don't even think about it anymore, but now I, I just notice there are no more birds. What's that sound? I don't know. Oh, God, something's out there. And it's coming this way. Please, no. Get behind the car. What good will that do? Now. It'll see us. I hope it does. That's the Arrowhead police copter. Down here! Hello, we're here. Look down here. It's heading north. They didn't even fly over the cabin. What's wrong with them? They must have come looking for me after all. When I didn't check in. They'll make another pass. When? On the way back. After they get to the top. And what if they don't? Give me the axe. Now the hammer so I can clear out this glass. Let me help you. Use the axe. Clear the hood if you can. So I can climb in. Wait. You've cut yourself. Don't worry about it. Your arm's bleeding. I'll go get a towel or Forget something. Forget it. Forget it. Put, put a couple of logs out in the clearing. I don't have any then more logs. Then use branches. Dead wood, anything. Pile some leaves around them and light it. Maybe, maybe the copter will see the smoke. You got any matches? In the house. I'll find the wood first. Miss Scott? I see it. Tell me what you see. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Two legs, one head, one big eye. Why does it see us? Maybe it does, or maybe... Something's wrong with it. Stand back. What are you doing? Take the truck. Get going. I'll try, I'll try to keep this nightmare busy. Maybe you can reach the village and get help. If I tell them about this, they'll lock me up. You're going to have to run the risk. Why does it do something? I don't think it sees us. Why? Is it blind? That's a good question, because if it wanted to destroy us, it could have done that a long time ago. Us, the village, and the state of California. Go ahead, will you? Take off. Funny thing, Trooper. As scared as I am right now, I've got a kind of thing about futile gestures, so if it's all the same with you, I think I'll just stick around. You're learning, Miss Scott. You really are. But I don't think you grasp the situation. I've got to fight that with this 38 police special. Like trying to bring down a bomber with a pea shooter. But right at the moment, I'm afraid it's all we got. Look out! It's falling! I don't think so. And then, what? It's getting smaller. Collapsing. Like, like some kind of balloon. Run! Not anymore. That's all it was. A balloon of some kind. As fantastic and unbelievable as that sounds, that's exactly what it was. The whole thing is made out of plastic. Mylar, I'd say. And a, a head with a face painted on it. That, that's all it is. A great big inflatable monster. Like in, in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, but who did this? Over there, on the ground. That's what did this. You mean that little toy? It's not a toy. Why? It looks like a model of a spaceship. Right. A flying saucer. A model? Take a look. Take a look, Charlotte, at what caused this whole nightmare. I don't understand. Get down on your knees. You, you can see it through the windows, the portholes. I don't believe it. There are little people inside. They're just tiny little figures in spacesuits. They look like toys. Not toys. They're real. Six inches tall, and this is their spaceship. Let them go before they do any more damage. Go now. Do you hear me? Go back to where you came from. There they go. Where do you suppose they're from? I don't know. But you know something? I wish them luck. 
they were more frightened than we were. Maybe the next place they land, they can be the giants. But what if, what if the next ship that lands here, what if the next one really are giants? Then I think you'll spit in their eye, Miss Scott. You think so? Yes, I do. I really, truly do. An experiment in fear, conducted by beings bent on exploring a planet called Earth. A simple laboratory exercise with two isolated humans as the subjects. The purpose? To determine whether this planet is suitable for a race of creatures only six inches tall. Too small to frighten anyone without the help of some rather basic special effects. Because fear, like size, is extremely relative. It depends on who's looking down and who must look up. It also depends on other variables, like the time of day, the mood, the atmosphere, and the sound of things that can't be seen in the dark. But it's been said before, and with great validity, that the very worst thing to fear is fear itself. So the next time you hear something go bump in the night, take a deep breath and count to ten before you give in to panic. The truth is, what's out there may be even more frightened of you. A tale of irrational terror and tiny visitors from the Twilight Zone.